Welcome back to Making It Awkward. I'm your host, Jessica Wilson. As we close out Pride Month, I'm excited to introduce you all to my spouse in this short and sweet episode. Among many other things, my spouse, Alicia, is non-binary and autistic. She uses she and he pronouns. I refer to her only with she and her pronouns because it works and it doesn't make sense to Alicia that I would switch them up. She doesn't use they or them pronouns, often assumed for non-binary folks, because of the ubiquitous use in our society when referring to random entities, officials, corporations, and others, as in what did they recommend, or they said that this was healthy. Alicia and I met 16 years ago, and per queer math, our marriage of 14 years is quite young. It could have easily been 15 or even 15 and a half years old by now. Alicia and I met at work, some details of which you'll hear later. We were both working for the University of Oregon in Eugene at the time. In 2009, I moved from the athletic department to the University Health Center, and post-grad school life in Eugene was a culture shock. Having been around the athletic department for years, I got to see people of color on a regular basis. In my new professional life, I knew of two Black people in the whole city who were not students, only one of whom I was friends with. He was a doctor at the health center, and the way he was treated while he worked there still baffles me, while at the same time, it doesn't. One of the first days he worked there, he was greeted with a watermelon on his desk. Because the staff there knew that watermelon and black people were associated with each other and just assumed that meant that my doctor friend really liked to eat watermelon. Truly, it was meant to be a gift. He and I were so confused, and I was the support person in multiple HR meetings, not there as a part of my dietitian job, but for my colleagues of color, and it just wore me down. I'd also heard stories of Black people in Eugene grocery stores having been asked how to choose a good watermelon because, again, Black people and watermelon. And it makes sense when Black people were not permitted to own property in Oregon until 1926. The Black population in Oregon has remained stagnant, around 2% of the population since. In 2013, Alicia and I decided to move to California. In addition to all the wild racial dynamics of Eugene, there were only two months of the year it didn't rain. And after eight years of seasonal affective disorder for 10 months of the year, I needed to go. We moved to Oakland and then Sacramento, where we worked together at UC Davis, a portion of our lives that many of you are familiar with. If you've read my book, It's Always Been Ours. What you'll hear today is a 2.0 recording. We didn't like how the first one flowed. So instead, with about 30 minutes before recording this episode, I swapped out some of the topics for a rapid fire question and answer. I found a website with banks of questions for newlyweds or engagement parties and started with some of those. And we had a lot more fun. I've included some of the info from the first recording in this intro and the interlude. Something that we regularly say is that it's impossible for Alicia to tell a lie or a partial truth because of the way her brain functions. But after this Q&A session, I think we should revise that to she's unable to tell a lie in person without being detected as it manifests immediately in facial expressions and body language. You'll likely find out why there's a need for this differentiation as you listen today. The second half of our conversation is about her exploring whether she has autism and a tool that she's found helpful. I'll tee it up for you then. Here's the Q&A. Alicia, welcome to the show. Thanks. All right, are you ready? No. Willing? Sort of. (laughs) Who takes up more than half of the bed? You do. I know. Who has the better hair? That's hard. When yours is, like, freshly done, Mm -hmm. I would say yours. But on a daily, I might win that. Yeah, I think you're more consistent with that. Who always thinks they are right? You do. Uh, you I will be quickly to say if I'm wrong. You are not. You have to, like, get second opinions and all these things. Verify. Who is more honest? Me. Yeah, for sure. Who is more likely to get lost? You. But who cares about getting lost? Me. Yes. (laughs) 
who is more likely to stay late at work? You. Really? I would think you. No. When you had a job as an athletic trainer. Well, I still have a job as an athletic trainer. Fair. <laughs> but when I worked at collegiate, collegiate athletics at the university, it wasn't that I stayed late by choice, just yeah. busy, lots to do. You work late by choice often. Okay. Who's more likely to be late for work? You. <laughs> Um, who is the sweetest tooth? I do. Okay. Who is handier? I am. Mm. Mm. Who's a bigger reader? Uh, I think I am. I think you're the most consistent reader. Who listens to the most podcasts? You do. Who's the bigger shopaholic? I don't think either of us are shopaholics. Who does the most shopping? I don't think that's fair because I do shopping for the family. Yes. But... I don't know. I don't... Who's more likely to cry in a movie? Eh, I am. I know, and it's so the sweetest, and you think I don't have a heart. <laughs> well, sometimes you don't. You should be crying, and you are not. <laughs> not even an ounce of moisture. <laughs> I feel like... I mean, not an ounce, but like... A drip. A, there's not even a glaze over your eye. This is not a glisten. Uh, yes, that's always when I'm reminded how sweet your heart is mm. when... Yes, because it could be at a cartoon. It could be at many things. It's adorable, and I love that about you. Who made the first move? You did. Who made the second move? You did. Who made the third move? You did. <laughs> Who made the 175th move? You did. Do you want to describe what happened? When I first met you, all you, you kept, like... Wanting to be friends or pestering me, and I just wanted <laughs> to eat my lunch in the break room and be left alone. Pretty much. So, yeah, yeah we met at work. I'm reading or listening to Cle- Cute right now and the relationship they have, and Phoebe pestering Grace it resonates, and I like it a lot. You'll love it. Shout okay. out. Shout out to that book. Who is more likely to spend more time in the shower? Mm, probably me i think so except like once or twice a week when i actually have to wash my hair Ooh, who said i love you first oh i don't know i don't either who's the better cook if i actually cook me what do you mean if you actually cook like if i cook an actual dish or yeah. a meal or bake something then me but if i'm just like i don't know have like <laughs> i don't know i'm the better cook <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't matter. Uh, who's the better baker? I am. No. By far. Uh, yeah. I have been excelling lately. You've been getting better, but that doesn't mean you're the better baker. Fine. I have a chance to overtake you in this. I doubt it, but if you think so, that's great. I'm happy for you. Mm-hmm. Shane is going to teach me how to bake. What are... See, you still don't know how to bake. <laughs> you just admitted it. What are three things that you would like me to bake? I, I don't have anything. Oatmeal chocolate chip cookie? Oh, yeah, sure. A pie? Mm, I no. I don't know. Starting cake? Ooh, carrot cake. That would be nice. That would be nice. That's a hard one to get right, though. Raisins or no raisins? Uh, raisins. <laughs> that's the only it's not thing. Even a question. That's the only thing in my life that requires or that benefits. I feel from raisins. No oatmeal cookies with raisins is real good too. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I know your opinion. That's why I asked for oatmeal cookies with chocolate chips because if I said <laughs> raisins, it's never gonna happen. I mean, it would. I just wouldn't know if they tasted good. Who cooks most often? You do, because I meal prep. So basically, I yeah, once a week. Yeah. <laughs> I be, right. If you cook more consistently, but I probably have to cook more often. Who has a better fashion sense? You think you do, but I don't know about that. I think that you have to ask what the fashion is, and then you're able to get it together after that. What the? Fa- I have to ask what the fashion is? What do you mean? You have to ask Lexi what's in, and then you can put together something. Who wakes up first? You do right now because I work swing shift. Who stays up the latest? Obviously, I do because I work swing shift. Who is funnier? I am. You are funnier? Yeah. Yeah, tell a joke. I don't have a joke. Okay, prove you're funnier. 
I don't have any way to prove that. The people- it's like the Discovery commercial right now. Prove you're not a robot. There's no way to prove it. Mm, you could say something funny. I don't have anything right now. It just comes naturally when it happens. Mm, mm-hmm. And since you can't lie, the people just have to believe this. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who makes all the plans? Nobody makes all the plans. We both make plans. Who makes more of the plans? You do. Okay. <laughs> Who's more outgoing? You are outgoing. I am not. <laughs> Who's better at keeping secrets? Me. You think? Yeah. I don't know about that one. I'm pretty... I think we might just keep secrets. Huh? I think we both might just be good... You se- keep secrets from me? Oh, you keep secrets from me? You just said that you did. Well, yeah, something... Not stuff that I've done, but something that somebody might tell me. See? Yeah, if I can't share, it's a secret. Oh, I see. I think we're both good secret keepers. Who is more likely to binge watch a show? You are. What? Yeah. Especially if you have to get it in so that you know what's going on on social media. <laughs> I have to participate in the conversation. I guess you're more likely to watch a 17 season show from beginning to end. Yes. Okay. okay. Who's the nerdiest one? I think it depends on the definition. Doesn't every word have like one or two definitions? Stop being specific about this. <laughs> Who talks the most? The person that was just asking the question. (laughs) Who talks the loudest? The person who is not necessarily. When you get excited, you're definitely louder. I'm louder than my normal, but I'm not louder than you. Who spends the longest time in the bathroom? You. Why? Your hair, your makeup, you're on your phone, so everything takes a little bit longer. I would like to say, like, three times longer, but, (laughs) um, yeah. Okay. Who's the most adventurous? Hmm. Depends on what you mean by that. Yeah. What do you think are the qualifications? I don't know. I would say that you're more likely to adventure off-road-ish, and I'm more likely to adventure in life maybe are you asking yourself (laughs) i'm asking you who looks the best today well i i do of course oh yeah okay uh do you want to describe what you're wearing to the people i am wearing a button-up shirt (laughs) long sleeve Uh uh-huh with a nice pair of slacks Uh uh-huh and matching belt and shoes okay yeah yeah, they're both leather, like that orange, I forget that color is, like the orange-brown color. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, what color are your pants and your shirt? My shirt is black. Uh-huh. My pants are a light blue color. Okay. Do you have a coat on? No. No. The long sleeves is enough. It's warm here. It's fair. It's fair. So, back to the top of this list. Who is more honest? I am. Mm-hmm. Who is not able to tell a lie? Me. You. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, yes, and apparently you also have the better sense of style, and you dress up even for podcast interviews. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just like, you know, in school they tell you to dress up for a test so you feel confident. You got it. Yeah. They do say that. Yeah. Who's more like my dad? You are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you two are peas in a pod. I think that you two are very similar okay but you're more like him okay fair but so you married your dad is what you're trying to say not at all okay <laughs> i'm marrying myself <laughs> okay fine i guess that does mean i'm more like him but <laughs> you two are very so i would like to notice that you just had to try to be right right there <laughs> uh fine okay speaking of not being able to tell A lie. You're not able to do hypothetical questions because they're not real. Right. Yes. So, like, but which which superpower would you... Hmm. So you want to do a hypothetical question? (laughs) Yes. If you were a superhero, would you rather fly, be invisible, shoot webs? Invisible. Invisible? I'd like to stop time. Hmm. (laughs) Transition. 
Now, in the second half of this episode, we talk more about autism. At the beginning of our relationship, we both thought Alicia had depression. She would have a stretch of feeling emotionally fine and then have a rapid onset of exhaustion and low affect without explanation. When those would stretch over weekends, I'd put her on what we called the island, which was simply our couch with a blanket, books, movies, and the TV remote for the whole day. I told her she couldn't move to do any chores because the floor was actually hot lava. In the last decade, she's explored the idea of being a highly sensitive person, something that for her refers to the energy of the people and spaces around her. One specific example is in thrift stores. She says that there might just be two people inside, but it feels like 2,000 because of all of the individuals who have owned the clothes in there and their energy left on the items. It wasn't until a few years ago when Alicia was exploring autism that we started discussing and questioning if Alicia had ever had depression or if it was just entirely autism overwhelm. And being a highly sensitive person was also just a part of her autism. For the last couple of years, Alicia has eaten pretty much the same breakfast, lunch, and dinner Monday through Friday. A smoothie for breakfast, eggs, veggies, and toast for lunch, and then chicken, vegetables, and rice for dinner. Snacks may vary, but typically have fruit and other components. She works a swing shift now, so our dinners aren't spent together during the week, but on weekends we mix it up and it's not a problem for us to have different kinds of foods and meals together. She told me that sometimes she gets bored with eating the same thing during the week, but it's better than having to decide what else to eat. A listener asked if Alicia tries all of the wild wellness food that my dad tries for my Instagram series called Ultra Processed Fridays, which involves him and I trying various ultra processed food, many of which are wellness products. I'd guess that Alicia tries something about 6% of the time, especially because my dad has to vouch for it, which he can't often do. But Alicia was the one who already had the liquid IV. She'd had a lot of leg soreness after getting COVID, and liquid IV was the product that helped her get over that soreness, which could be considered to be a wellness success. But it was not a tasting success. I'll link to the tasting video in the show notes. In this second half of the episode, Alicia mentions a wearable device on her wrist. It's a WHOOP, W-H-O-O-P, and it's marketed to athletes and advertises, quote, performing your best every day requires an understanding of the dynamic relationship between your physical exertion, mental load, sleep quality, general health, and your body's ability to bounce back, end quote. And then it provides a device that supposedly does all of that. Alicia uses it as a tool for understanding her mental exertion, stress, and overwhelm, and to help her plan if she's going to need more time to recover. She picked it up as a trial device to explore her workouts and now is able to use it in a different way. The Whoop gives her feedback on how well she is recovered in the morning. This recovery came up in our first recording when I asked about camping, something that many folks don't understand, especially when we go places without toilets. You and I will go camping in places where there are not toilets. Some friends don't understand how this is a thing people enjoy. I don't go camping about toilets. (laughs) What do you go camping about? (laughs) Get away from people. Yeah. What's it like to be out there? It's quiet still. Yeah. Not the city energy. Yeah, no. It's still, it's quiet. Yeah. yeah. Everything has a place. Everything's organized. Mm. The vibrations are lower. Yep. Yeah. So toilet or no toilet, doesn't matter. (laughs) No. No. And she notices on the whoop that her recovery while camping is consistently high, even if she gets five hours of sleep. Someone asked how our relationship has changed after our understanding of Alicia's autism and my neurodivergence. And you'll hear Alicia say, not much, but I've realized that I need to take her questions absolutely literally. (laughs) In addition, she's told me many times that there is no hidden agenda behind the words that she says. She says exactly what she means. For whatever it is, she's not looking for a vibe or a general answer from me if she's asking me a question. She's asking for specifics. 
A couple of years ago, I started Googling ways to be supportive to a spouse with autism. The top searches on the internet were from what I call autism widows. They were from women sharing their sad stories of not knowing their husband was autistic until after they were married and how terrible their lives are now. Focus on the Family, a well-known fundamentalist Protestant group that lobbies against LGBTQ rights, was in the top 10 Google results at the time. One of their resources details a woman's experience of hope. She says, quote, my husband and I learned how to take a nearly impossible marriage and make it manageable. God also directed me to a free online support group, end quote, which is gross. Even today, the second article on Google, when I search for how to support a spouse with autism, is tips for women in relationships with partners on the autism spectrum. Reinforcing the gender assumptions of who has autism in a relationship and gearing the information to those assumed to play the supportive role. We've been figuring it out, and I look forward to a lifetime of learning new ways to support each other. With that, I hope you enjoy the next part of our episode. How was it to realize late in life that you were autistic? Do not know. How does it feel? I don't feel a way about it. No? Did anything in your, your life change? No. Everything's the same? I mean, yeah. Like, what's as a gonna, function. What's going to change? <laughs> How do you think about life could change? Mm, no. Still have to participate. Still have to <laughs> go on. Mm-hmm. When do you think you noticed it the most? Noticed what? That I have to participate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when bills became a really <laughs> significant reality. <laughs> there uh when do you think you noticed for sure that you had autism i do not know the moment i don't either been about 10 years 10 years wow when did you start talking to me about it maybe two years ago maybe maybe three yeah so you do hold secrets no it just takes me a long time to get words and identify things there what made you start thinking about it um Things changed in my late 30s as far as, or mid-30s. Everybody seemed to socially advance in a way that I did not. When I was younger, I seemed the opposite. I was advancing, Mm. and other people were catching up, but um, something changed. And Hmm. Did you ever find that specific thing on the internet or in research, that phenomenon? Mm. I don't think so. I haven't seen it, but it'd be worth looking at. I remember thinking it a lot when the pandemic happened and that routine and the structure and the... Oh, you mean when you were stuck in the house with me? (laughs) And I wasn't traveling all the time for work? Also, you getting upset when me or Lexi would say, wear whatever you want to or wear whatever makes you feel better when you would ask us what to wear. Yeah, that's not helpful. No. When you ask, what should I wear? What are you actually asking, Alicia? Literally walk in my closet and tell me what to wear. <laughs> what to wear. That's what or I tell wear. me jeans and a button-up or a t-shirt and shorts. Tell me what to wear. Yeah. Not just the vibe. That was helpful to know about you, that it is the specific question with a specific answer. It's not just like a general request for information. <laughs> Correct. Got it. And then someone had a specific question about whether our marriage changed. No. I think I got, like with the understanding questions, I think I got better at answering questions and clarity, even though I really struggle to form still clear sentences that don't have a general direction. (laughs) <laughs> like this. This is a perfect what you're example. Saying right now. This is a perfect example. Like you're not saying anything. But I said a lot of words. <laughs> but it's nothing. I know. This is a perfect example. We'll leave this up. Um you wear a whoop, W H O O P. Um how does it work? Um it monitors your heart rate, oxygen level, and uh yeah, you use those two things to judge the stress levels in your body. Okay, and then it gives you a stress score? 
Yeah, it gives you a strain score strain. and a recovery score from your sleep. Either red, yellow, or green. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I found that your use of that data has been both really interesting and helpful. How so? If you were in the red, like your strain score was high, and it was also like a hard week, it like made sense to you. And you were also able like to see if your strain score during the day was high by like 10 a.m. You were like, all right, I am collecting this data. Either these people, this job or this situation are likely not going to be a long term <laughs> uh, option for me. Yeah, my strain was my last job was hitting pretty high without even doing any physical exercise. So, yeah, just knowing that you had to show up to talk to those people. I guess so. And yeah. What is it now with your current job? So the strain's always super low. Cool. I don't think about it. Unless I exercise. And then it's appropriately gets higher. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Love you. Love you. Thanks so much for listening to this short and sweet episode and happy pride, everyone. I was so glad to see that a review for Kent's very gay episode came in. It reads, Jessica and Kent Stan, huge fan of making it awkward, especially the queerness and Christianity episode with Kent Thomas. If y'all haven't checked out Kent's episode, I highly recommend it. Leaving reviews and ratings like these, as well as sharing an episode with a friend, are the easiest ways to support the show. Next week is my follow-up conversation with Malak Sadie, and we are joined by Maya Torres and Layla Shana to talk more about the eating disorder field's response to forced starvation in Gaza. We'll chat a bit about the over-certification of our field, especially IADEP's requirement of supervision, and how the options are predominantly white women, teaching us how to support BIPOC and otherwise marginalized clients. I hope you'll tune into that conversation. Until next time, friends, make it awkward. You can become a sustaining Patreon member of the show, linked in the show notes, which will support the editing and episode mixing of the majestic Gen Jacobs. You'll also get bonus content and show announcements. This is a production of The Body Politic and is supported by Patreon members and the legacy of Sacramento Outboard Services.